Hello, my name is Dr. Adam Shedakovsky and I'm a research analyst at Kozak Kadari Securities. Today, I'll be talking about the net asset value approach, a model to estimate the value of a company's share. Firstly, I will discuss a variant of the net asset value approach that we know the famous Warren Buffett has used. And then I will formally introduce the net asset value approach. The model is then used to value three companies. Finally, I will talk about the benefits and shortcomings of the net asset value approach and briefly mention other variant of the net asset value approach called the liquidation approach. Just a friendly reminder that COSEC does not take into account the investment objective, financial situation and advisory needs of any particular person, nor does the information provided constitute investment advice. For more information, visit COSEC.com.au. Okay, so let's get started. So I wanted to start with a little bit of an overview of stock valuation models. So here we can see what are the most frequently used valuation models according to a survey conducted in 2019. As you can see, NAV or the net asset value approach is not the most frequently used. Nevertheless, it is among the top four of the most frequently used stock valuation models. So we'll be looking at three variants of the NAD approach. Firstly, the 66% NCAV approach that Warren Buffett have been using particularly earlier in his career. Then, the more common net asset value approach. And finally, the liquidation approach. All three of these models have one thing in common. They are focusing on a company's current performance and are not assessing future performance. In contrast to this, all of the other models listed to the right are either directly or indirectly related to a company's future performance. Okay, so let's get started by looking at the 66% NCAV approach. This strategy was introduced to Warren Buffett by Professor Benjamin Braham, a well-known value investor. The idea is to buy undervalued companies, and this is done by computing the company's net current asset value and compare that to the current share price. Okay, let us look at a particular example and see how this strategy can be applied. So here we'll be looking at a company called Lightbridge Corporation, a nuclear fuel technology development company focusing on addressing the world's climate and energy needs. So the first step is to compute the company's NCAV, and that is done by taking the value of the company's total current assets and subtracting total liabilities. So for this example, we can see that the total current assets amount to $18.4 million. Moreover, here the total liabilities is actually the same as total current liabilities. And that is $0.35 million. Using these two numbers, we can compute the company's NCAV. The next step is to compute NCAV per share. And for that, we will also be needing the number of share outstanding. Looking at the financial statements, we can see that at the end of the 2019, the company had 3.25 million shares outstanding. Combining all of that, we compute the NCAV per share to be $5.55. The final part of the strategy is to ensure that there is a margin of safety. In particular, that means taking 66% of the number we just computed and use that as a price of entry. So in this example, that will amount to $3.66. So here we see a diagram showing the company share price from May 2020 to July 2021. I also included the price of entry, so $3.66. We can see here that if we apply the 66% NAV investing approach to the company Lightbridge Corporation, that would have given a successful outcome as the price is currently trading near $6 per share. Okay, so that was a bit of introduction with reference to Warren Buffett. Let us now formally introduce the net asset value approach. So in this approach, the fair value of a company is estimating using the company net asset value, abbreviated NAV. That is computed by subtracting total liabilities from total assets. Most commonly, NAS is computed on a per share basis. 
So that will mean taking the total assets minus total liabilities and dividing by total number of shares. While all of these numbers can be found in financial statements, one should keep in mind that some of these numbers, in particular assets, are just estimates. When computing NAV, the investor should consider whether any adjustments are required, keeping in mind that the NAV approach uses the fair value of all assets and all liabilities. Okay, let us now look at some examples. So here we'll be estimating the NAV of the mining company BHP. To simplify the computation, we will be ignoring intangible assets. This ensures that the company's NAV and the book value coincide. The advantage of this is that book value per share is often included in financial statements. So in the table to the left, we see the company's book value per share over the last four years. And to the right, I included a more visual presentation of this data. We can see the book value is downtrending. And applying linear regression to get the best straight line fit, we see that that line hits $13.57 per share in 2020. That is our estimate for the fair value of BHP using the NAV approach. Okay. Let us now look at a few other examples. Firstly, the biotech company CSL. Here we can see that using the same approach, we get an intrinsic value of $20.62 per share. Finally, when looking at the Macquarie Group, ticker called MQG, we get the company's intrinsic value to be $64.62 per share. Compared to the current share prices of the three companies, we see that our estimates of intrinsic value are very low far below the current share prices provided by the stock market. Let us now look at an example where the NAV approach is very commonly used. So here we are looking at an exchange traded mutual fund. In the table, I listed the number of shares outstanding to be 2 million and I also included a list of company assets and company liabilities. Combining all of these financial data gives the NAV of $29.49 per share. Let us now discuss some benefits and limitations of the NAV approach. So one important benefit of the NAV approach is its wide applicability as a valuation tool for mutual funds and exchange traded funds. So for example, the exchange traded mutual funds publish their NAV on a daily basis. The limitation is of course, that for a typical company, the NAV approach would not provide a fair intrinsic value but rather a very pessimistic one. That being said, as we have seen for Warren Buffett, one can take advantage of this and use the NAV approach to find a bargain. Finally, I wanted to briefly discuss a variant of the NAV approach called the liquidation approach. Here we are again taking the value of assets minus liabilities divided by the number of shares. However, the value of assets is assessed in a different way. For the liquidation approach, we are only looking at the liquidation value of the assets. So the monetary value of the company assets that we could realistically liquidate. In particular, intangible assets are counted worthless, making this valuation more prudent than the NAV approach. In summary, after talking about the 66% NCAV approach used by Buffett, I formally introduced the net asset value approach. After that, the model was used to estimate the share price of BHP, CSL, and MQG. Finally, I finished up with a brief discussion of the applicability of the model and related it to the liquidation approach. In conclusion, while the net asset value approach often downplays the fair value of a typical company, it is a great valuation tool used by mutual funds and exchange-traded funds. Moreover, the net asset value approach and variants thereof are often used to identify undervalued companies, making it a valuable additional tool to help investors make more informed financial decisions. My name is Dr. Adam Shedakovsky and this presentation was brought to you by Kozak Kadari Securities.